All right, what's going on? My name is Kyle Welcher. Today we're going to talk about some of the more controversial topics in the bass fishing world. I have not talked about any of this stuff on my channel. I've left my channel kind of wide open, just try to be as positive as possible and, you know, try to say, you know, the best thing I can say at all the times to, you know, kind of include all ideas and stuff because I think all ideas should be, you know, talked about and discussed. That's the way we improve and get better and we're all that are at least you know make a profession in this industry like i do because i fish the bass master elite series i represent a ton of sponsors i don't want to do anything that could be completely controversial because i'm misrepresenting them their beliefs because they are you know attached to me and a lot of times when you get emotional and you know argue and do things like that you're misrepresenting even your own beliefs because you're reacting out of emotion for a split second and that becomes misconstrued for your entire life in some cases so i just want to say these the controversial topics for me i kind of always say you just kind of live and let live but in this one this week we've been talking about floggers if y'all have not been paying attention to the uh mlf bass pro tour on the st lawrence river they've been absolutely crushing them and i've seen tons of posts on the internet about people complaining about the floggers it's unfair advantage for fishermen and it shouldn't be allowed in tournament circuits and stuff like that yeah does it make it easier to catch spawn a smallmouth it definitely does because the water up there you know that's it's the same water that runs over the niagara falls it runs through lake ontario then st lawrence river the water's crystal clear it stays cool a lot of the year but the flogger just basically what it is and i'm gonna talk about electronics and stuff too basically what the flogger is is it is a cone-shaped device that's probably about this long. It's got a glass bottom on it. You put it to your eyes, and it's like a long pair of goggles. It's like this long, where you don't got to get super close to the water. And that glass bottom on it, it cuts the glare on the surface of the water. And you'd be surprised at just how good you can see down. It'd be the exact same as if you took a pair of goggles, leaned over the side of your boat, and stuck them in the water. You'll be able to see way deeper than you think you can. So basically, that's all it is. As far as I know, there's none out there that magnify. That's as far as I know. There could be. that I really don't know. But people are saying it should be banned. The problem with saying that type of stuff is, is it easier to catch spawn a smallmouth with it? Yes, especially in certain situations. Should it be banned? I don't think so, personally, because where would you draw the line? Are you saying you can't use anything to see in the water? Because if you ban the flogger, I would get out there with a pair of goggles, lean over the side of the boat, stick my head in the water, and fish that way. If you ban the goggles, then what? I mean, you, then what? You ban sunglasses because they help you see in the water? No, because sunglasses have been around forever. So it seems like a lot of times people are arguing from the stance that they want to ban something that they're not familiar with using themselves. And if you think back... I don't know when polarized sunglasses came out. I have no idea. But there was probably some people then that said, hey, uh, that dude has an unfair advantage because his, his glasses cut the polarization, have polarization on them and they cut the glare off the water. So why does he get to have those unfair advantage with those glasses? It's the same way with the electronics. Now there's a ton of forward-facing sonar. Whenever the side imaging came out, people had never seen it. They weren't comfortable with it. They're complaining about it. Now you can see out in front. I mean... I keep hearing online, take away the forward face sonar, take away the graphs, and then see where people stand. At one point in time, the flasher was new. The flasher was the newest, baddest deal on the market. It might have been 40 years ago or whenever it was. I really have no idea. But there was a time whenever that was brand new, and people were probably saying back then, I wasn't around then, but they were probably saying, hey, that's an unfair advantage. I get it. I understand. When it's weird, there's a learning curve. Whenever you're a weekend fisherman you don't have time to go fish every day like some of us do and i don't i'm not saying i have time to fish every single day but i do get to fish on the water a lot more than a lot of people now that i travel a ton i don't get to fish as much as i actually used to but you know the time on the water is the biggest deal whenever you only get to fish one weekend a month two weekends a month you don't have time to go out there and dial in the forward facing sonar every day until you got it you know 21 days in a row or whatever it takes to really understand it you don't have time to try all these new deals so when you show up to a tournament yeah you're going to be way behind but that's just how it is if google doesn't put out you know some kind of a new device every six months or whatever they'll fall way behind apple that's just how technology is and we're living at a time where in the past 25 years technology has advanced so quickly that things that even i remember from not that long ago are completely outdated just from five six seven eight ten years ago whatever technology is moving extremely fast now that being said the flogger is not new technology i remember seeing videos of people using the flogger in maybe 2011 2010 2012 somewhere around that range when i first heard of the flogger so that's been 10 years ago and i live in alabama so if i heard of the flogger whenever i was 
you know, 15, 16 years old, 17 years old in Alabama, they've definitely been around up there on those super clear water reservoirs for a whole lot longer. It wouldn't surprise me if people were, were flogging, you know, in 2000, 1995, whatever. I'm sure if you go online, I heard a rumor that somebody was doing it in like the 1980s to see smallmouth on bed. I, I don't really know, but it's not new technology. This is just the first time that a major tournament trail has went that time of year where it's that big of a player. There's been some FOW Toyota Series up there that time of year. There might have even been a Bassmaster Open that time of year where I've seen tournaments won, you know, using that device before. It's just never been a national, majorly broadcasted tournament like the BPT or like the Elites has been there this time of year where it's the dominant deal. And right now you're definitely seeing it's a dominant deal. It just makes you way more efficient on the water. And as far as, you know, anglers go, they have to use it. They're up there competing. They're, and I know some people say they're just out there fishing to feed their family or whatever, but the, we're all, a, you know, as competitive as we can be. We want to do as good as we can. We want to provide for our family the best we can. You cannot just take a stand and say, well, I'm not going to use it because I don't think it's right. If you're in the tournament, you have to use it 100%. And I mean, the problem with banning it, like I said earlier, is where do you draw the line? If I was up there and they're on bed and they say you can't use that, I would say, well, can I use a pair of goggles and look over the side of the boat? They say no. I mean, then I'm just, I mean, just where do you draw the line? Because there's tons of different ways to draw up different baits. And you can't just say you can't use any kind of object to see in the water better because then you can't use sunglasses. So my problem I have with it is where do you draw the line as far as electronics go and as far as that goes. But it's just my opinion on it. Things come around often. Things are always changing. And if you want to stay at the top of the game, you always have to take the time and learn them. And I know it's harder for some people that don't have the time to put on the water, but that's my take on it. That's my take on controversial. In my opinion, you adapt or die. That's the way that I approach everything. That's why I like fishing shallow. I don't like, I like beating the bank. I like fishing visual cover. If I go fun fishing, I don't turn any electronics on because I, I really don't enjoy it that much. I feel like it's way more fun to go flipping, skipping docks, frogging, skipping bushes, whatever it is, I would much rather do that, but I have to learn. I have to adapt. I'm not going to have a, a long and fruitful career out here on the Elite, so that's my take on it. I've got all the forward face sonar you can have, but if I'm fun fishing, I still don't like to use it. So, I mean, I'm not saying I don't use it. I'm just saying, like, if I want to get up and go get excited about bass fishing, it's going to be flipping and frogging and stuff like that, but you have to learn this kind of stuff, and I mean, I just think there's a a major issue with where you draw the line. I mean, now some of the Bass Master Elite Series guys, I'm sure some of the MLF guys also have cameras. They actually drop off the side of the boat, go down 30 feet deep, and scan for smallmouth on you know the St. Lawrence River or the Great Lakes or wherever they want to drop down and see the fish. They just drop a camera down and they don't even have to fish. They can just see the fish without even ever making a cast. So in the tournament, they come back and the fish have never even seen a bait. So I mean, there's tons of that stuff. It's just like, if you ban the camera, you have to ban forward face sonar. If you ban forward face sonar, why can you not scan forward, but you can scan straight down? So, I mean, it just, there's a slippery slope whenever you start talking about banning things. And also, it's going to halt the technology and it's going to hold back bass fishing. Because with the West, rest of the world pushing forward so fast technologically, we can't hold bass fishing back too much, or we're going to keep the bad, you know, thing about you know, drinking beer and being out on the boat on the water and being dumb rednecks and stuff like that. So we have to keep up with technology just as fast as the rest of the world and we have to show it to the rest of the world and show how we utilize it and showcase it, you know, on, on these major tournament trails. So I would say I understand being uncomfortable with the new stuff, but just think about it from a lot of different perspectives and that's my perspective on it all. So I hope y'all enjoyed the video. First thing I've done this kind of controversial, even though I didn't really take a controversial stance. That's just my outlook on things. So I appreciate it guys. Hit that subscribe button and leave me a like and leave me a comment if you've liked these more talking videos. I was talking with my buddy Jason Williamson the other day in, in, in the debate about old school, new school and how I didn't really think it was you know, a classification of people as far as being old school and new school and that old school and new school was more history. But if you like those types of videos, if you haven't seen that when it's on my channel, if y'all like those types of videos, leave me a comment and tell me you like the, the long-winded talking. And if you don't, well, leave me a comment. Tell me you don't because I need the comments, good or bad. But appreciate it, guys. We're about to head new to New York and catch some smallmouth. And we might have to get a device to help us see in the water. So we'll see y'all. Tell them um, um, they've been asking for t-shirts. Okay, they've been they asking for t-shirts. Y'all been asking for t-shirts. We have a logo. We'll put it right here. We'll put the logo that we have currently right here.
Yeah, we'll put it in the video. Y'all can t leave me a comment and tell me if you like that. And if you do artwork or have some kind of an idea, send me an email to kdubrkw at gmail.com with a, a, either a design for a logo or some critiques you have for this current logo that we're putting right here. I'm not putting the logo Put the logo in there and no. show it to them and see if they like it or not. Let, let, let them vote on it. And then if you want to do some artwork, that's fine. I'm not asking anybody to or work for free. But if you if you have an out. idea that you want to share, you know, like you're, you want to share with us, send it to me in an email. Let me know what you think, some critiques on the logo. Appreciate it, guys. We'll see y'all.